How's it going guys? Today I'm going to give you a walkthrough of what to use or what to bring and you know what's necessary when you're fishing for halibut or bass or white sea bass or even large perch from the surf. So uh, stay tuned and this should be a fun video. Okay so the rod I have is an Okuma Nessica. It is a nine foot rod. 10 to 17 pound line uh, and a half ounce to one half ounce lure. Uh, that's what it's rated for. It's a nine foot rod. Um, so it's pretty standard for surf fishing. I like to use either like an eight, six or a nine just cause it, you know, it gives you that casting distance, but it's also somewhat comfortable. Like instead of like a, you know, like a 10 or 11 foot rod. Um, but I really like using this nine. Uh, the reel I have is a pen battle three. Uh, it's a 2000, so it's a little bit of a smaller um, model, but I kind of like that because you'll be, you know, walking up and down the beach all day, so you don't want something that's heavy and, you know, tiring your arms out because, uh, you know, if you're making a thousand casts, you know, it takes it out of you if you're using a big bulky reel and a big bulky rod. And what I like about this rod, too, is that it's super light. Um, as you can see, like, it's nice, like, light design, so um, I really like this setup. So first off are pretty much the go-tos. These are my Lucky Crafts. Um, this one I think kind of resembles, it's American Shad color, but I think it resembles uh, a small surf perch. Um, and then you got the, the, the usual ones. You can see that these have been a, you know, they've had their fair share of mouths. Kind of chewed up. This one I actually haven't caught a fish on yet. I've only used it a couple times, but it's not, it's always good to have a couple of these in a variety of colors because you don't know which one's going to be biting. And then here we got a Daiwa. Um, these, this one and this one are Yozuri's. These ones work really well, but they're just a little smaller and a little tougher to cast. And then this one's just kind of like a Bass Pro Shops brand. Um, and then right here, I've actually had a lot of luck on this one right here, catching a Barracuda from my kayak just offshore and even halibut in the surf. Just got this one, excited to try it. Um, and then there's another one that's like a blue mackerel, but again, uh, the variety is key It's always good to have a variety of things Cause if one thing's not biting you, you know after like 20 minutes or a half hour You change it up and try a different color different pattern uh, And then we have more of like our swim baits in this area We got your bucktails Nice feathered, you know trailer and most of them have like a this one's like a chartreuse speckled grub uh, white grub um, chartreuse tail on a, like a, the small big hammer swim bait on the back. And then you got the double tail, the twin tail grub, which actually works really well for halibut. And, um, and then you just cut your normal swim baits, like the bleeding trout I like, cause it kind of looks like a, you know, like an anchovy, like a bait fish. And then you just got the plain like white ribbed swim bait. Um, and I actually kind of like using these like lighter colored, like a white or a glow or like a chartreuse head. I don't know why, I just feel like those get bit. And then another option is uh, your drop shot setup. So your drop shot setup, I kind of like using circle hooks, like a two watt, um, you know, tie a dropper loop about, uh, you don't even need a dropper loop really, but you know, about 15 inches above your, above your sinker. And usually you can use like a one or two ounce sinker. Um, and you sort of like the, you know, like the gold mullets. Chartreuse is very popular. I like using the white, or you could even use these like the zoom flukes. I kind of like using this pattern. Again, it resembles kind of a bait fish. It's a smoking shad. Obviously, you can see I've had it for a while. It's pretty old. Um, and then you got your Pro Cure, which is like a gel that you swipe on the swim baits to give it a scent. It just kind of helps the fish smell it a little better and it attracts them a little more. Um, when, when I'm attaching these, all of these lures, I usually like to use uh, a snap swivel. This one's a little large, but if I can find a smaller one, I will just so it's super easy for me to interchange my uh, my baits. And pretty much uh, I'll, give, I'll show you guys kind of how to attach those and basically how easy it is to switch them out instead of having to cut your line and retie every time. But before that, I'll just do another little run through of the rest of my stuff. I invested in the Salty Crew Fanny Pack. As you can see, it's quite salty. It really comes in handy. I'll kind of show you these compartments. So the front one here has like a foam area where you can, you know, put 
you know, you can put hooks on and stuff like that, but mainly it's just, I mean, there's two compartments and then this hidden compartment, which I usually keep my leader and my measuring tape. And on the side, you got a pocket here. This one's for your pliers, drink holder there, and then another little small zipper compartment for like a, you know, utility knife or something like that. Um, but it's super, you know, functional. Um, super easy when you're wading in the surf because it stays around your waist and it's super easy to access. Um, so I highly recommend using a fanny pack or some sort of like small backpack if you're fishing from the surf. And then you got your pliers with a bungee on them so you know they're not going to fall off or you know like fall in the water and you know get washed away. Braid cutters. These braid cutters are made by Pitbull Tackle and they're, you know, super, you know, they're either really good at cutting braid and mono. Um, just really, really good braid cutters. Um, just any measuring tape. I, I'm going to invest in a smaller one, but this one, you know, it's just one of the ones that, you know, I have a surplus of in my garage. So that can't go without the measuring tape because halibut are 22 inches. Uh, the bass are usually 15 and the sea bass are 28. So you, you really gotta make sure that you have a measuring tape on hand. Um, sometimes what I do is, is you know, I'll mark my rod, I'll measure it down to, you know, wherever 22 is and like wrap a piece of, you know, duct tape around it. But just to be safe, I always try to keep a measuring tape with me. And then after, if you catch a legal one, you got your fillet knife. And then when you catch it, especially those toothy, you know, halibut and some of the bass that have teeth, fish grips and I can't stress enough how, how much these like save fingers. It's so basically they, they just open up like this, clamp down and the fish just, you know, they can't get out of that. So you put it into the fish's mouth. So that's how you can pick those up safely. Uh, and now we can go into tying some rigs and I can show you guys kind of what else goes into, you know, doing the surf fishing. So now we're going to go into the knot tying and um, tying leader onto your main line. Um, when I'm surf fishing, I like to use 30 pound Power Pro braid uh, and then like either a 15 or a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. Uh, and so basically let this white rope act as your leader and this red one is your braid. So basically for a uni to uni knot, which is kind of what I mainly do to tie these, um, you know, you take one tag end tag end of your fluoro, put it this way, tag end of your main line, this way, all right? And then with the main line, first you make a little loop, you know, loop just like that, but make sure you have enough line, enough line in there to wrap it around about five or six times. So one, Two, and make sure you're going over and under this as well. Three, just because it's so big, I'm only going to do four. And take these two ends, pull that kind of tight. Should cinch down. And now you take your leader end and do the same thing, get a little more slack. Make that loop. And now you just go over and under. Another, again, five or six times if you're using a uh, fishing line, but I'm only going to do a couple here because it's rope. And I'm just trying to let you guys see. So now it should look like that. Pull that one tight on both sides. But now, essentially, your line should meet and cinch down like that. So you can see that. There's a actually a fairly good uni knot. And then what you would do is with your braid cutter or your you know your pliers, I'd highly recommend getting a braid cutter for this braid. You snip off these tag ends and then it just connects looking like that. So it's nice and tight, nice and clean, and that's kind of it's really easy to pull apart. Even even with that small fishing line, you can pull it apart, but it they, it can't pull through each other just because of the, how many times it's wrapped. So really easy to pull apart, impossible to pull off. So now we're gonna go into um, the, the rigging on your leader. 
um, tying up basically like the dropper loops and uh, now we're going to talk about the dropper loop. So the dropper loop, you know, pretend that, you know, this is coming from your main line. What you can do with your weight is, let's pretend that this leash here is the loop of the weight. I usually just do like a fisherman's knot, I'm pretty sure, or a clench knot, where you put the line through. Or you can also do a uni knot. The uni knot, basically you take it through, put it through a second time. And then you do the same thing where I uh, actually like the uni knot better. Um, I know a lot of people do Palomar knots, but I find this one just a little easier. Um, again, make sure you go through twice. Do that loop again. And then over and under, you know, five, six times for your line. And that should tighten right down. It looks a lot nicer with fishing line, but it should tighten down in the long run um, if you're using you know, actual line, which it gets nice and tight. Um, but then again, you know, it's easy to take off. But so with the dropper loop, hold on, let me just get this out for a second. What you want to do with the dropper loop is you want to go, you want to give yourself plenty of room. And I usually like to make the dropper loop before I tie my weight on because I just, you know, I can, I can always cut off extra depending on how high up my dropper loop is. But you know, if you put your weight on first then you're kind of stuck with wherever your dropper loop is. So at the dropper loop, same thing kind of with the uni knot, you make a loop, grab loops right here, grab one of the ends, I usually grab the lower end, and then with these two pieces, you twist them out under and over, over and under, over and under. Again, five or six times is like the usual key for this. Um, this you usually have to use your teeth, and you put basically put this part in your teeth, use your hands, and you use your mouth to pull this up, and your hands to pull this apart. But essentially, if I can do it without using my teeth, that'd be awesome. There we go, and there is your dropper loop. And then you basically feed this part through the eyelet of the hook, and then you put this part again over the shank of the hook and the tip of the hook, and then it comes right back up to the top and it, you know, it's totally locked in place. I would demonstrate on a hook, but the, the, the thickness of the line and stuff, it's, it's, it's very hard to see um, braid like this on camera. Um, it's much easier with rope. And that's pretty much how I rig up my setups. Um, with the swivel, it's kind of, I just kind of do it like how I showed with the leash, or I'll do like a uni knot where I'll go twice through, do the loop, and then feed the loop through five times and pull it tight. And then with that, with that snap swivel, let me show you really quick. It's just so, so easy when you want to change your bait. So basically what it is, is this part goes to your main line and it, sw and it spins freely. So when you use like those, those lures that twist often, like, like these crocodiles do, they just twist. And then when you, you know, you reel it in, it like it unravels when you reel it in. So this, this swivel will help it from unraveling. So essentially like the snap swivel, is just sometimes uh, people. Some people say it affects like how like the lure is like presented in the water, but um, usually if you can find one that's a little smaller than this one, this one's kind of more for my rock fishing and lingcod fishing. Um, I do have some smaller ones here somewhere, but uh, the smaller ones are a little more subtle, and it really helps out when you're using these these lucky crafts because it you know just gives it that much more action when it's you know it gives it a little more natural presentation. Uh, but it really helps out and really saves you time and that, you know, intricate finger, you know, business when you're uh, wading out there in the surf and you need to change something up and get another cast out. 
Um, so it re really comes in handy. And obviously, if you get the right snap swivel, it'll fit in on any one of these eyelets. Um, but it's super helpful. And I highly recommend using snap swivels and, instead of just cutting off line and having to retie every time. Because as long as you have one good knot right there, I mean, that's the only knot you need that day. Instead of, you know, worrying about if every knot that you tie after retying is good, you just have this one and it usually, you know, ends up being all right as long as you, like, you know, really test it and pull on it. Again, just a little summary of kind of what I went over. Um, obviously a rod, nine foot rod, um, you know, somewhat flexible. Uh, you want like a, a quarter or a half ounce to like a one and a half or two ounce even. Um, and nine foot so it can get you beyond those waves. Uh, you got swim baits, bucktails, you know, the, the crocodiles, and then your your jerk baits and lucky crafts and stuff like that. Um, your drop shot with a you know circle hook, weight on the bottom, and then you know your preference either a fluke or one of these gulp swim baits. Um, even a Carolina rig with a with a uh, like a fake sand like a gulp sandworm would work. But uh, that usually gets a lot of perch, and you know what I'm targeting is halibut, um, bass, and uh, sea bass. So, um, and then the fanny pack is super clutch. Um, I highly recommend getting it. Um, same with the braid cutters and just cutters, any any sort of pliers that have this bungee, because I mean I can't stress enough how how clutch this bungee is. Um, the bungee, like I've I've lost. I mean I know everyone's lost pliers, but I've lost probably more than the average bear. Um, same with measuring tapes. I know that every kind of handyman slash dad can attest to that. Uh, measuring tapes go missing like like no other. Um, measuring tapes are very important to have if you want to keep illegal fish. Uh, same with a fillet knife uh, if you don't want to you know transport it in your car. Um, also, I'd highly recommend just carrying like you know you obviously bring in a cooler just in case and obviously bringing um, like a like a freezer like a gallon ziploc bag the fish grips super come in handy um, any fish that have teeth there's a lot of fish that have teeth that you can catch in the surf um, even though they're small teeth you know they still can can uh, mess up your fingers pr pretty good um, so that pretty much covers it you got everything here you could ask for even the scent um, and this is what I would highly recommend if you're trying to get into surf fishing for those kind of nice dinner plate fish. Um, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned to see how some of this stuff plays out.